Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Friday Sewing School. All right, so today um, we are in the middle of a men's shirt sew along. Um, but because of time constraints and everything, um, I'm going to push the last video of that to next week. And this week, um, I'm going to show you some film footage that I took as a sew along making a blackwood cardigan that I gifted my mother-in-law for Christmas. A few of you were wanting to know how I was doing the lace overlay with the stretch lace um, on the one cardigan that I made and also on the t-shirt that I made. So what I did was I filmed um, making this entire cardigan. It's a blackwood cardigan. I'm grateful to have permission from Helen of Helen's Closet to do a full sew along um, of the blackwood cardigan for you. Um, what I did was I'm um, taking you through um, overlaying the lace and then constructing the entire cardigan and in this um, entire sew along will be one video so grab your cup of coffee and um, dream up some fabrics and let's sew along uh, a blackwood cardigan and I'll be back at the end all right so I'm about to cut out this blackwood cardigan for my mother-in-law for Christmas made a few adjustments to it um, she's very very short so I have just kind of tacked this up so that um, I'm taking five inches off of it um, rather than permanently alter my pattern though I just sort of taped it up temporarily and I'll put weights on it to make sure it stays that way um, so you want to cut these out this is the stretch is going this way um, you want to make sure that anything you cut out with a knit, that the stretch goes around your body. And if you have questions about knits, um, feel free to look at the video I did uh, a couple months ago on tips on sewing with knits. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring this over here. I got this little piece of fabric from Zinc's the outlet store and this has really been folded and used a lot of times so I just kind of straighten it out if this were something very tailored I would iron this pattern piece And I'm going to also cut a lace overlay for this one. You know, I talked about this in other videos, but I love this Kai um, rotary cutter. The blade engages only when you press down. So I can do this even though the blade is ready. It's still not going to cut until I actually press down on it. So it's kind of nice. You don't have to press super hard, but um, it's a little bit safer, I think, than some of the other options out there. Okay, so I have the back piece cut. Get that out of the way. a nice thick interlock cotton interlock I really love this fabric this was on the dollar fifty a yard table at Vinks so can't go wrong fabric outlet shopping is the best thing ever but I mean, I save so much money by doing that. I'm gonna pull that down just a bit. 
make sure that clears the, was not cut very evenly. So I um, have to make sure it's all cut. So my mother-in-law is between like a 14 and 16, um, but she kind of likes things big. So I'm making a 16 in the um, arms and shoulders, neckline and the grading out to an 18 on the hips. That'll give her ample room. And sizing up on the blackwood allows you to kind of wrap it around yourself a little bit more. Um, so I generally size up on this one a little bit. One of the complaints people have about the blackwood is that it, it doesn't um, it doesn't come all the way together in the front. So if you size up a little bit, gives you the a little bit more room to feel as if you can wrap it. I ordered a new blade for this cutter and if I what I did was I ordered a 60 millimeter by mistake. the same um, length adjustments in the band that I made to the front and the back. So in theory it should fit together really nicely, although I'm probably going to do some measuring to make sure. cuffs. Now I need to do my sleeves. Move this up as far as I can. out. This has been what for most people would be severe shortening. <laughs> but uh, she's a very, very, very petite woman.
obviously has to be uh, put on grain so that the stretch is going the right way. left here I might be able to do some doll clothes or something with it um, usually just get rid of the really small pieces and then um, fold that up it's actually big enough to do a bodice um, on a baby outfit so I'm going to go ahead and save that maybe you could even make a wee lap, a wee lap tea with it So that's going to go in my baby drawer. All right, so now I want to cut the overlay, the lace overlay. So I'm just going to grab my front piece. So I'm only going to put it in the front. So I'm just grabbing my front pieces here. I only want to put the lace on the front. Um, because if it's in the back, it's liable to get snagged on something. So I usually just put them on the front. This has all been pre-washed. And I've already used some of it to make a cardigan for myself. The grain is this way. It's stretch lace, as you can see, which would be very important for this pattern. I hate the fact that I have chapped hands right now. <laughs> All right. And you could use the pattern piece if you want, but I, I'm just going to use the cut piece. Make sure it's wherever you lay it down that it is doubled. And I'll just put some weights on it for good measure here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Switch my blade over to lightweight. So you want to take care not to, you want to take care not to um, snag the lace. I always um, store it in a plastic bag once it's pre-washed. That way nothing in my cupboard is going to, um, if, there's any, if there's anything in the rest of my stash that might um, snag it, it won't if I store it that way. So I'm just cutting those pattern pieces. And this is not real expensive lace either. Is nice and the cardigan that I made for myself with this lace has held up really well so all right and those are the only lace pieces that I'm going to use on this one just the two fronts and I'll fold my lace back up and put it in a bag for the next time <clears throat> So now step one of making the cardigan when you're adding lace like this. What I do I'll take the two fronts put them right side up and I'm 
gonna take the lace pieces and I think this is the right side. Let me see. I have to look at it really closely to know. This is the right side. So then I'm just gonna lay the pieces on top. Hopefully this is all on camera. So I'm gonna lay this piece on top. And just line it up. a little patient that it does take a minute to line it all up. And just make sure it's laying nice and flat. I don't want to use any pins on um, the lace if possible. So I'm going to just clip it together all the way around. And then after I clip this together, I'm going to very carefully take it over to my machine and I'm just going to zigzag all around the entire edge to um, hold it in place. Now, if you want to, you could use a little bit of quilt basting spray, the kind that is temporary and goes away, um, but it gets your mat all sticky. Um, yeah, I don't like it. so. I do it this way. Um, but if you want to be really precise and you're worried about it, you could use some basting spray. I would test it though on your fabric first to make sure that it doesn't discolor it or anything like that. Most important thing is that this lace just lays nice and flat so then from here on out you can just treat that piece as um, one um, pattern piece So I'm going to go over and do that and then do the other half and then we'll be ready to construct our blackwood. All right, so I brought the piece over here to the machine. I'm going to put it on a zigzag because I feel like the zigzag um, will keep it from, um, will just be a wider way to hold it. And I'm probably just going to leave the default settings on. Alright, I'm just going to start at the arm side seam here and just zigzag it. If you see it overlaps a little in little places where it didn't cut quite as straight as the other one, don't worry about it. Just, um, just as long as it's laying flat, you can trim it later. When you're working with lace too, you might want to be careful of your rings and um, nail, uh, hang nails and things like that. And don't don't stretch it at all when you're doing this. Just, just basically. is all basted. Um, I can trim that a little bit um, and just use this then as one, just treat it as one 
treat it as one piece. So I've applied the lace to this piece and tried real hard not to stretch it. It did just a little bit, but it won't, not enough that it'll matter. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up the edges. And then from here on out, I'll be treating this as one piece. And then just the fronts will have this lace overlay. Do the same to this piece. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the shoulder seams. I'm gonna treat these pieces that have the lace basted to them as just one piece, like any other pattern piece. Put those right side up. I'm gonna go ahead and lay the back down on it. All right, and I'm gonna sew these two seams here. You can trim away any um, lace that's sticking out past where it should be. All right, and um, as long as it's not going to, to um, be on top of the lace, I'll use a pin. Um, doesn't I don't usually have too much trouble with it snagging at this point. Um, just if you're sticking it into the actual lace on top. All right, so I'm going to go to my serger. All right, so I keep twill tape in the drawer. So I'm just gonna cut a couple of little pieces. Um, you don't have to be real exact because you're gonna surge off of them anyway. All right. Go to my shoulder seams that I've already pinned. So I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch seam allowance, which um, is basically one of these notches here. So the dotted lines are for when you have a double needle and the single line is for when you have a single needle. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using the double needle. So I'm gonna use that as my guide. I'm just going to stick that twill tape on top. This is one time when you absolutely cannot sew over pins. I'm just going to go ahead and let, let it grab and then pull my pin out. And just go ahead and just let that twill tape catch right in your seat. Because serger's um, stitching is uh, stretchable, I don't have to do anything but serge it. All right, so I have my reinforced seam. <clears throat> and I can just cut the remainder of the uh, twill tape off. I'm going to do the same on this side. <clears throat> All right, so now I have my shoulder seams done. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this over and press it. I'm gonna go ahead and pin the sleeves in place. The double notches go to the back. And because this is a knit, I'm gonna be stretching and easing the sleeve right in. match up the center with the shoulder seam. All right, 
And I'm going to leave that alone to stretch. And the same thing over here. And I'm going to pin them both while I'm here at the table. Threads that I need to clip. Sometimes if you get going really fast and you uh, get lax on clipping threads, it can have disastrous results. Your thread could catch underneath and um, gum up your whole thing. So be sure and snip all your threads as you go. All right, I'm going to go over to the serger and sew these sleeves right. in. I eased my sleeves in with the serger. I thought that the camera was running and it wasn't, so I apologize I didn't get that on camera. Um, but it's the same principle as doing it at the machine. If you want to see an example of putting in a knit sleeve flat like this, you can go to my t-shirt video that we did on Friday Sewing School. All right, um, I'm going to go over and I'm going to uh, just steam these a little bit and um, get those to lay really nicely. And then we'll be doing our side seams. All right, I've pressed the sleeves, so they lay really nicely now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to uh, match up the side seams, which actually finishes the sleeves as well. I usually start the pinning at the um, underarm seam to make sure that matches up. And a trick to matching that is when you put a pin in, make sure it's going through the stitching on both sides, and then make sure the pin is perpendicular. And don't pull the pin out until you're almost right to it. I mean, you can't, you have to make sure it's before the serger blade. Um, but um, when you get up to about right there with the blade, stop and then pull that out. And then it should, um, it should go through really well. All right, and I'm going to pin this sleeve together here. Now these seams should not be stretched. The side seams um, should, if you, you, know, you don't want to stretch those. You want to stretch the ones that go around the body, but not the ones that go up and down, if that makes any sense. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just sew this side seam. And then I'm just going to serge three eighths of an inch all the way from here to here, making sure that the um, making sure that the pin stays perpendicular to the very last second, and that the um, seam gets the seam that's pressed toward the sleeve stays that way as you're going out. All right. All right, we now have the basic cardigan shape to this garment. We have the sleeves and the front and back together. All right, next we're gonna do the cuffs. And um, we will start with the sleeve cuffs. All right, so, and we're gonna make a seam here on that side. All right. I'll be back with that. Okay. So I have sewn the cuffs together, um, pressed them open and then folded them over. So I have cuffs. I'll show you. They were like this sewn together and then I matched them up here. 
all the way around to where they were really even. All the edges are even. And then I pressed it like that. So now I have cuffs. All right, so I'm going to turn these sleeves inside out. And I'm going to put the cuffs inside. I'm going to match the seam. I'm going to match it in two places. I'm going to match it at the seam. And again, here's a place for a perpendicular pin. I need some pins here. All right. I'm going to go right to the pin. But take it out before it reaches the blade. threads um, that have to stay that way I will do it a number a couple of different ways but this is my favorite way I take a big needle and I just weave it through the end of the serging it might get tight right there all right, and then I just thread that that piece through, grab it, and pull it through, so that it's going through some of the um, other serging, and it kind of locks it. And then I'll take a little bit of fray block as well and put that on there just to make sure that it stays. Fray block is nicer than fray check because fray block dries a little bit flexible. And um, when you're doing knits, it's fray block or fray chuck is kind of bad. So I like the fray block a little better. But be careful, you only get it on the seam allowance and not on any other part of the garment. All right, we have two more steps to go. Um, I'm actually going to take a lunch break and come back and finish that. Be with back in a few moments. But um, I just wanted to show you how we have so far. It's not hanging on there very straight. Um, but we have a very nice. Um, garment going here. Um, we just need to apply the bottom band and the front band, the uh, band that goes around the neckline and down the front. All right, I am going to eat some lunch and I will be back to finish. Okay, so the next step, pardon uh, my printer in the background. <clears throat> the next step, you're going to take the bottom band and you're just going to fold it in half and baste it together so that it's all one piece. And I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and just zigzag along that edge right there so that I can treat this whole thing as one piece. All right. So I've got my cardigan here, and I've got my bottom band. It's all pressed and just basted together just so that it's um, I can treat it as one unit. And I'm going to go ahead and pin that to the bottom of the cardigan. You might need to stretch just a little bit, um, but really not very much for this step. Get that thread out of the way. Just get your raw edges together. Now 
we're going to go over to the serger and we're just going to go ahead and serge this bottom band on. Three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I went ahead and I sewed my bottom band on. It looks really good. And I pressed it. All right, so there's one step left, and that is the front bands. Okay, so you have two of them. So you're just gonna go ahead and seam them together right here for the center back. And I'll be back after doing that. All right, so I went ahead and I did the seam and pressed it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it right sides together. And um, do a seam here at both bottoms. Alright. And then after that's done, I'm going to go ahead and press them together like this. And you know, turn the, turn the corner and base them just like I did the bottom band. All right, be right back. All right, so I went ahead and I uh, zigzagged that closed, pressed it after closing off the bottom, and this is ready to apply. Okay, you're gonna take your neckline here and find your center back. Now the key thing with this is that there are places you stretch and places you don't. All right, so you're going to go ahead and line up the seam, the center back seam, with the center back of the cardigan. All right, and then you want to go ahead and stretch on the back and match notches. Because around the back of your neck, you want it to kind of lay flat. And another place you want it to lay flat, uh, down the front, across your breasts, and then after that, you'll want it to be just not stretched. So um, the key there being stretch in some places, but not all. So you're going to continue to stretch it a little bit. I'm being very careful with this lace. So you kind of want to, around this curve, you kind of want to stretch around that. And once you get past that curve and the breast area, then you're going to want to go straight without stretching it. So I'm going to match the bottom. Now you need to make sure these match up exactly. All right, so put a pin there, make it perpendicular. Um, and make it one that you can, you're not going to remove that until you, until you actually have the uh, band sewn on. Um, what I like to do, this is the one place I don't serge first. I actually will base this on with the sewing machine um, because it's difficult to get that started without um, making it slip. 
So I will go ahead and sew this on by machine and then I'll serge it just to make it uh, look nice on the inside. And remember when I say stretch, I don't mean the body of the garment, I mean the band. You don't wanna stretch the body of the garment at all. Um, that's going up and down and you don't want to stretch up and down. All right, we've got that side pinned. Now I'm going to do the same on this side. The key to knits is when to stretch and when not to stretch. Um, when you're going up and down on the body, you don't stretch. When you're going around, you would. However, you don't you don't want to stretch the body of the garment, but just bands and things that you're applying to it. I'm going to go ahead and match this up exactly again. almost done with this garment. Once you do a few of these blackwood cardigans, um, they're just, they go together so quick. They're the easiest, quickest gift. This one is for my mother-in-law. I don't know if I mentioned that. And um, she's gonna love it. I made it purposefully smaller in the neck and shoulders and short. Um, so it, it's big where she's big and small where she's small, and I think she's going to love the fit. So I'm going to go ahead and base this together. And I'm just maintaining the stretch where the pins are. And then I'm going to go ahead and serge it. And the last step will be to top stitch it. So I'm going to go ahead and just base this. Um, and I'll be back. So I basted this at the sewing machine, and now I'm gonna go ahead and serge this band on. See how I was able to match that up exactly. That's very important. And at the serger ends, I'm gonna do what I did before. See how that meets just exactly? That's um, why I based it. Now I take one more step to make sure that those serger threads don't come undone because um, they're just they're just at a point where if they did, it'd be look really bad. So what I do is I go over and I, before I top stitch, I just go over and I just straight stitch down right on the seam allowance and just to make sure that that serger tail stays down. I have given the band a really good press and now it's time to top stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on a very, very narrow zigzag. to zero. I'm going to put it at 0.5 and I'm probably going to go ahead and leave it at the default um, two. All right and then I'm going to do it is I'm going to just stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around. go ahead and use my hump jumper here to get it started so it starts nice and neat. again we need the hump jumper so 
So it isn't just for jeans. <laughs> it's also useful anytime there's a nothing for the machine to grab onto. You have to go over a large hump. a completed garment. I'm probably going to press this one more time and um, I'm ready to give this to my sweet mother-in-law for Christmas. And there is our finished garment. I can't model it for you because she's much smaller than I am, um, but there's our finished garment. It's beautiful. I can't wait to give it to her for Christmas. So wishing I could show you the final product um, without just pictures, but I did gift it to my mother-in-law for Christmas. And she wore it to an event um, at the senior center that she lives at, and she loves it. She especially loves it because her arms are short, and um, this is actually a jacket that fits her that she doesn't have to constantly be pulling up on her arms. So what a joy it is to sew for loved ones, um, especially ones that have fit issues and um, we can make their life easier and more enjoyable. So I really, um, I was really happy to gift that to her. So enjoy your Blackwood cardigan. And um, if you've made them, please go ahead and send me pictures. Um, down in the comments, I have an email address. Send your makes to me and we'll feature them in one of the Tuesday videos coming up. Um, I've had a number of people send me makes already. If you saw uh, yesterday's video, we had um, we featured a couple of you in that. And I would love to make this more interactive and more um, audience participation. So send in your makes, your questions. Um, this is all about you and what you need. And I really um, am happy to answer questions and share your beautiful makes as well. Um, I wanted to show you something. I didn't think I got an, a chance to show you. Um, I got this beautiful bracelet. My daughter-in-law made this for me for my birthday. And I'm going to bring it close to the camera so you can see. It has little sewing things all over it. Um, and little words, loved, believe, blessed, dream. It's got a little sewing machine and scissors and thread and a thimble so anyway i love it it's a treasure item i had a picture of it on instagram um so if you didn't get to see that but anyway i was happened to be wearing it today and i thought i would show it to you she's uh she's amazing and um yeah she made me feel very loved when she made that for me so anyway have a wonderful weekend and I will see you on Tuesday. We're going back to our regular Tuesday, Friday schedule next week. And um, I have lots of fun things planned. If you don't happen to be subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. And um, you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy weekend and happy sewing.